Imagine the power of knowing exactly where you are in the world at any given moment. Imagine where that knowledge could take you. Now imagine the innovation it takes to enable such a capability. The GPS constellation has is, is just been uh, incredible. It's uh, gone way beyond the initial application. Delta II has been an unprecedented success. The history behind Delta II is remarkable, and I hope that people uh, learn it and are, find a way to repeat it. It's known as the workhorse because of the uh, performance it's uh, achieved. People have always looked to the skies for navigation. The earliest mariners used the sun and the stars to calculate their location. Radio navigation became the tool of choice in the 20th century. These advancements each represented huge leaps in navigation, but nothing has transformed the field as dramatically as the introduction of the global positioning system. I don't think we can overstate the importance of GPS. GPS is everywhere. In fact, we say here that GPS today is in so many places, we probably don't know where it is. It is literally everywhere in our lives today. Generally, the job of the pilot not flying used to be everything you did was just trying to not get lost. Now that we have a system that does the basic navigation for us, for us of telling exactly where we are, where we're going, how fast we're getting there. With the goal of incorporating the best features of previous U.S. Navy and Air Force satellite programs, the Department of Defense in 1973 began development on a continuously available global system that could provide highly accurate positioning, timing, and navigation information in all weather conditions. The Air Force took the lead on the project, which later became the NAVSTAR Global Positioning System. It literally saves lives because the quicker you can get in there, locate a, a, a downed airman, pick him up and get him out of there, the quicker that everybody's going to get out of the area. Everything is tied together through GPS. Developed to meet evolving military requirements, the GPS system, unlike any other U.S. military program to date, has expanded into the commercial market, becoming a mainstay of everyday life for people around the world. GPS not only provides critical situational awareness and weapons guidance for the military, it also enables efficiency in a wide range of civil applications. It turned out that GPS really has pervaded, uh, you know, our universe. So it's just difficult to imagine what it would be like. I mean, if you if you do anything that has timing or navigation or position in it, I don't believe there's any other program like GPS that's actually touched everyday lives, and so many people have become dependent on it. And it's not only just us; it's improved the quality of life for everybody on the planet. We don't just do GPS for the military. We don't just do it for America. We do GPS for planet Earth. After testing a series of experimental satellites in the mid to late 1970s, 11 Block 1 demonstration satellites were launched on Atlas F boosters between 1978 and 1985. At the same time, ground control systems and user equipment were being developed and tested. The Atlas system, uh, a actually some converted Atlas missiles launched uh, many of the early development satellites for GPS. So it was a good fit for the government to uh, have some of those early development vehicles for the GPS uh, constellation then called Navstar launched from, from Vandenberg. In the early 1980s, national space policy dictated that the space shuttle be the primary launcher for the United States. With this decision, the end of the expendable launch vehicle was near. The policy was to put all of their payloads on the shuttle rather than use expendables, and so they were phasing out Delta, uh, the Delta I vehicle. And we were down to next to no launches. We had one left, I think, in, the, in that time frame. At the same time, Block II, the first series of operational GPS satellites, which incorporated significant security and reliability upgrades, were nearing their 1987 launch date when the 1986 Challenger accident changed the course of history. With the Challenger accident in January of, of 1986, 
uh, there was a realization that we had to find multiple paths to get satellites to orbit. And obviously GPS was part of that um, challenge. So we uh, had the MLV contract that would uh, uh, contract for 20 uh, GPS missions. And the Air Force created actually the best model of a, a satellite launch partnership. It enabled the opportunity to develop a great vehicle. On February 14, 1989, the first operational GPS satellite began a new chapter in space launch history as it rode to orbit atop a Delta II launch vehicle from Space Launch Complex 17 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Demonstrating an incredible feat, the Delta II had gone from conception to launch in just two years. If you think about that, that's a pretty remarkable uh, span of time uh, with which to go from a dead stop to, to, uh, to actually putting things on orbit. But really, it all goes back to the heritage of Delta and the fact that um, uh, we had flown these things, we understood the technology, and we, we basically evolved that technology to improve, incrementally improve the performance and, uh, and, and very effectively and efficiently get this capability uh, for the nation uh, in, in, in a very short period of time. We not only had to develop a new vehicle, we had to build a rapport with the Air Force and Aerospace because up till that time, Delta had been basically a NASA launch vehicle. With this change and proposal, we ended up working with the Air Force, and the obvious culmination of that whole thing was the first launch of Delta II, which was a big success. The Delta II evolved from over 30 years of experience meeting the nation's medium payload needs. Since the late 1950s, Thor rockets, which developed into Delta, flew some of our nation's most important early spacecraft, including Corona, an historic spy satellite program, and ECHO, NASA's first communications satellite. To continue the Delta legacy of supporting the nation, a few modifications were required to meet the needs of the GPS satellites. The way we did it was to stretch the tanks. We developed a new uh, fairing and then we put bigger solids on. You consider performance, cost, and robustness all coming together uh, to support uh, a GPS. It just made sense. The early to mid 1990s proved to be a fast paced time for Delta II and GPS. In just six years, the Delta II had gone from development to reliably delivering a fully operational 24 satellite constellation. The Delta rocket is such that you can turn from launch to launch in, in a matter of uh, 45 to 60 days. So as soon as one mission was done, you were on to the next mission. And it was a very exciting time because there was a lot of launches going up. The thing about Delta II is that you knew it was going to launch. You were pretty sure it was going to be on time. And you felt comfortable it was going to be reliable. In 1991, Operation Desert Storm provided the first real combat test for GPS. GPS was really brand new. In fact, the full constellation wasn't even on orbit in those days. GPS really allows us to strike with precision and navigate with accuracy. Those are two age-old military problems that we have that have largely been revolutionized by GPS. And as we go on, the GPSs get better, they get more accurate. Both missions that we did in Kosovo, we were in and out in less than two minutes. GPS clearly saves lives. Uh, my friends who are in the combat search and rescue business would say with some amount of pride that GPS has taken search out of search and rescue. It makes a big difference in how you know, we actually execute the war. We can use standoff weapons, we can use more precise weapons, and both of these things uh, enable us to uh, limit collateral damage and save lives of the warfighters. GPS uses the distance between objects to provide navigation and position information. It measures the distances between the user and the location of the 24 orbiting satellites comprising the system. Positioned approximately 12,000 miles above Earth, GPS satellites orbit the planet every 12 hours, emitting extremely precise time, velocity, and location signals. Fundamentally, GPS provides uh, you know, global coverage, 24-7, 365 days of position, navigation, and timing service. The control segment actually generates the information and keeps time on the ground, which is a critical aspect of GPS and allows it to, to transmit the correct information down to the, all the receivers, whether they're commercial or military. After nearly a decade of successful launches, on January 17, 1997, the team faced an early challenge on the Block 2R program. 
The failure of a solid rocket motor on Delta 241 ended the launch of the first 2R satellite just seconds after liftoff. And all of a sudden it was gone. It just exploded in a million pieces. When we finally got out of the blockhouse, the place looked like a war zone. There were fires all around, cars were destroyed. But what's really remarkable about that is in very short order, the team came together, the government industry team, and uh, even though we were never able to, to uh, um, ascertain root cause, uh, we knew what the source of the failure was. We took the steps that needed to be taken in, in very rapid succession to get that, that vehicle qualified for flight. Overcoming the Delta 241 failure was a pivotal moment in program history. To move the entire launch system, be able to reestablish a new launch control center, and do all of that in five months and bring us back to launch that quickly after a tough day, I think really talked to the, the teamwork between the, uh, the Air Force and the Delta team and the dedication of the individuals involved. It's emblematic of the, of the kinds of folks that you get to work with on a daily basis and, and, uh, and really appreciate the dedication as well as the uh, tremendous experience and knowledge they bring to the fight to be able to create that kind of effect. Basically taking a failure as spectacular as it was and as, and, and, and as painful as it was and within six months, we're flying GPSs again. Truly remarkable. The Delta II team went on to successfully carry the remaining 2R satellites to orbit by maintaining a consistent launch tempo and reliable delivery. We have liftoff. The Delta II earned the title of industry workhorse for its 20 years of dedicated service. Workhorse in, in our industry is, is really quite the compliment. It really means an extremely operational and, and reliable system and uh, you hear Delta II described as a workhorse all the time. The team has really pulled together to make sure that uh, we can get these national treasures on orbit successfully and make sure we continue to support the warfighters and the civil users. There are a set of uh, shark teeth that were uh, put on the outside of the fairing and that, that was to distinguish the uh, GPS launches. Whenever you looked at a, uh, a rocket and saw the teeth uh, on, the, uh, on the fairing, you knew that what was inside and it was another GPS satellite. The on-orbit delivery of 2R21 represents the passing of the torch to the next evolutionary step in satellite and launch vehicle technology. GPS-2F will usher in advanced technological capabilities including twice as many navigation signals and development has begun on the GPS-3 series which promises improved strategic and civil capability. GPS is, is a great capability. Uh, we're not only sustaining the current capability, but we're significantly modernizing it and we're upgrading our control segment to enable us to have better control and information assurance of our entire GPS system. And we're also developing a new generation of military user equipment to allow them to better operate in more urban environments in this, in this current uh, conflicts that we deal with today. For delivery to orbit, the 2F and 3 series will require the more powerful Atlas V and Delta IV launch vehicles. Both vehicles have established themselves as the operational choice for the U.S. government with the flexibility to adapt to each payload's unique requirements. Just like the partnership with the Air Force that created Delta II, when we created the EELV program, the next generation GPS systems was in, our, in the trade space. GPS-3 is being uh, sized to op be optimized around an EELV vehicle. And again, we hope to build on that uh, long-term view and partnership and align our acquisition strategies. Marking the Delta II's final step in establishing a more capable GPS constellation for the U.S. Air Force, Delta 343 lifted off from Complex 17 carrying GPS 2R21. We have liftoff, liftoff of the last United Launch Alliance Delta II rocket carrying GPS 2R21 for the United States Air Force. I think it's going to be very bittersweet. The rocket has done everything that uh, anybody has asked uh, of it and uh, exceeded probably all expectations in terms of its reliability and its performance. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of pride in knowing what we've done, uh, knowing how we've served the warfighter by putting the, uh, the GPS satellites into orbit over the last 20 or so years. It's an enormous achievement. The Delta II team is really integral 
to GPS and the, and the success of GPS. It is a tremendous uh, integrated team effort. One of the things that we always say about LaunchWork, LaunchWork is teamwork. So we certainly want to congratulate those folks that have been involved with the Delta program successfully for all those years. This mission is, is really significant. It's the capstone to just a phenomenal, phenomenal run for the Delta II system. Now 20 plus years and, and again just an incredible, incredible success. It's going to be a proud day for the Delta team. A lot of these people have been working this program for almost 30 years. I mean, it's basically been pretty much, you know, they've dedicated all, all of their adult life towards supporting this program. Again, why it's going to be such a significant emotional event for folks after we launch 2R21. Two, two, two but, but that said, uh, uh, you know, they're the better for it and the nation's the better for it. So um, it's been a great ride. It's been a terrific ride. You know, it's a shame we can't ask the GPS satellites themselves. I think they would say the same thing. It's been a great ride.